Welcome to The Secret Math of Money. This show is meant for entertainment purposes only. I hold no financial certifications or information that is not generally available. No guarantees are stated or implied. It is your money, and you are responsible for any decisions you make regarding it. All right, take two. Hey, everybody. This is Tyrone Griffin. Uh, This is the episode of The Secret Math of Money. This week's episode is called Game Spy, and it's all about what happened. Now, this podcast will be on YouTube, and we'll probably be posting it out as well. Uh, for those of you new, what we do is talk about money, but talk about understanding how money works. So it's not just about his money, here's money. It's how does money work. So that said, this week's show is about GameStop. Now, what's the deal? What's the deal with GameStop? Well, GameStop is that company that uh, they sell... Uh, video games, video game cartridges, and all that kind of thing. Um, those storefronts, and they, you know, they you can you can get your Xboxes and your Playstations and your video games to support those systems. That's what Games GameStop GameSpot sells. Well, a couple years ago, everybody started going um, online, so people had no reason to come into the store anymore. So GameStop was losing, started losing a ton of money. So then they tried to pivot, and then COVID hit. And then all the stores had to shut down for social distancing. So they lost a whole lot of money because of that. Okay? So that's what we are. So games, the game spot is, 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 slow, is dying a slow death. So, okay. So now, what happened? There are three players. I talked about game, game spot already. Game stop, excuse me. Um, basically, I said they were up Doodoo Creek. That's where they were going. They were dying a slow death. The other player were the hedge fund managers. These are the rich people. Now, what's a hedge fund? A hedge fund is basically um, a mutual fund that instead of buying and selling stocks, they buy and sell the right to buy and sell stocks, if that makes sense. okay? And hedge fund financial regulators usually restrict hedge funds from marketing except to institutional investors, high net worth individuals and those who are considered sufficiently sophisticated. So. If you're poor and stupid, they don't want to talk to you. And that's pretty much the rest of us because they don't ever market to us. Okay, So that's what hedge funds are. They buy and sell the rights. They deal primarily in derivatives, not the stocks in derivatives. Okay, And then the third group, the interesting folks, the day traders on Reddit. Uh, Reddit is a social media platform. And you know that was me and you. Um, people considered too poor, too stupid to be targeted by the hedge funds. So... They just day traders. You know, they trade maybe one trade a day, maybe 10 trades a day, but they trade during the day. So that's those are the people on Reddit. So those are the three groups you had. You had GameSpot, you had the uh, hedge fund managers, and you had Reddit. What happened? Okay. Funny you should ask. So a month ago, GameSpot, GameStop, I keep pronouncing it wrong. GameStop was selling for $17 a share. Today it closed, or Friday it closed at $325 a share. What happened? Let's see. Um, so like I said, GameSpot was slowly going out of business. And the hedge funds saw that. Now, the basic rule of investing is buy low, sell high. But when you got a stock that's going like this, that's going down, you can't buy it low because it's going to be lower. You expect it to be lower when it's time to sell it. So what they did was called short sales. Now, what's a short sale? Short sale is when, say, I don't own the stock. So what I do is I borrow the stock from somebody who owns it. I say, hey, man, let me borrow you know, 10 shares of this stock. And then I sell it to somebody else like it's mine. Yeah, that's legal. Go figure. I sell it to somebody else like it's mine. But then I got to go back and replace what I borrowed from him or her. But what I'm hoping is that over time, the price will go lower so I'll be able to buy it back cheaper and I'll be able to keep the difference. So, for example, if I bought it, if I borrowed it from this person at ten dollars a share and I sold it to that to this person for ten dollars a share, I borrowed it for nothing, sold it for ten dollars a share. I still got to replace that. If the stock price declines to two dollars a share, I then buy it. And for every share, I make eight bucks. I buy it and give him back his money. Everybody's happy. So that's what a short sell is. You're betting that the stock will continue to go lower. Okay, so this is what the hedge funds were doing. They buy it here and they were expecting it to to die this slow death. So um, 
they did it for not just GameSpot, it was AMC Theaters, it was Macy's, and it's a couple other ones. So this is, this is how the hedge funds operate. So what happened? The Reddit people got involved, and they looked at it, and they were like, nah, man, we, 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 don't, we don't like that. For whatever reason, they decided to start buying these stocks. Now, the price of a stock is based on supply and demand. Demand will change based on information. But in a nutshell, that's the, the, the basis, supply and demand, okay? So they start buying the stock while it's declining. Well, the supply don't change, but the demand do. So guess what happens? Instead of going down, it starts going up because the demand is increasing and it keeps going up. Now, the hedge fund managers, they got a problem because they bought the stock at, you know, say, what, 17 they're expecting it to go to 16, 15, 14, whatever. All of a sudden, it's at 20. It's at 25. It's at 30. They got a problem because they have what's pretty much called unlimited liability, meaning there's no limit to how much money they can lose. They bought it at this price. All of a sudden, it's at this price, or they sold it at this price. All of a sudden, it's at this price. They are obligated to buy it at some point to replace what they borrowed from this person. They are obligated. So if they borrowed it at $10 and it's now 20, they are still obligated. Now they can make a decision. They can say, well, I'm going to buy it now, you know, at 20 and cut my loss to $10 a share. Or they can say, um, make sure this volume is up. Or they can say, you know, I'll wait and see what else happens. That's what they can do. The problem with that, you wait and it went from 10 to 20, then it goes to 25, 30, 40, 50. The higher it goes, the more those hedge fund managers are losing. Because remember, they still got to buy it, regardless of what the price is. So the longer they wait, they're hoping it'll start dropping back down. But the longer they wait, the higher it keeps going. So they start losing more and more money. That might not seem like a big deal. If a stock is $10 and it goes to $100, you lose $90. But if you have 2.7 million shares times $90 a share, you got a problem. That's just plain, you got a problem. So, and this is where it gets crazy because if they start pulling the trigger, if they say, oh, I just got to buy it. I'm just going to cut my losses here and buy it. Well, the fact that they are buying increases the demand again. Okay? And the more the demand, the more higher the price goes. So they are kind of stuck in this situation where, you know, if there's 10 hedge fund managers and one of them buys, the other ones are seeing the price keep going up. And it's like, dude, you're making it worse. So, you know, they're stuck. So no matter what they do. So then what happens? Um, the price is going up and other people start noticing. And here's an example of what happens in. OK, I go into a bar. I go to a happy hour. I go to a bar on a good day. I'm a six, maybe six point two, depending on the lighting. I'm at the bar. Nobody's talking to me because I'm being all six. You know, Holly Berry walks in. Holly Berry walks in. She walks over to the bar, sits down, talks to me. We have great conversation, laughing, joking, gives me a hug, and she leaves. Boom. Everybody in there that I notice, all of a sudden, I'm not a six anymore. I'm an eight, nine, 9.2. I didn't do nothing different. But everybody is like, you know, not everybody, but people are like, what am I missing over there? This is something that I wasn't paying attention to him, but he got Holly Berry walking in here talking to him. I'm missing something. This brother got it going on. Same thing happens with stocks. People start seeing the price rise and they're like, oh, I got to get in on that. So then they start buying. And the more they buy, the higher it goes. So it's like you're feeding the monster. Meanwhile, the hedge fund managers are sitting there and they're wetting their pants because Every tick up is money they're losing. Now, granted, eventually at some point, it'll probably come back down, but you don't know when. 
And until that time happens, they have to record the value of their investment. Their investment is not X billion, it's negative because they are still liable to buy that stock at some point. So as the price changes, as the price increases, their liability increases and they got to report that. So they're losing money. One, one uh, fund, I think they had to get a credit line of like $2.7 billion. Okay, yeah, again, this is all funny money, but this is what's happening. So the hedge fund managers are freaking out. Point blank, they are freaking out because, and, and we're still in the middle of it. You know, we're still, it's like, this thing didn't like happen three months ago and it dropped. We are still in the middle of it. The stock closed at $325 a share on Friday. Okay, there are hedge managers, hedge fund managers all over the country and they are freaking out all weekend because they are under they are upside down they have lost so much money it's not even funny okay so that's kind of what happened um did the reddit people and it was thousands of reddit people just went in and started buying the stocks were they trying to screw the head fund, hedge fund managers maybe um but at the end of the day i tell you right now ain't nobody going to invest to lose money just to mess somebody over. Ain't, ain't nobody going to do that. So they whatever they were doing, they were planning to make some money. And they made some money. If the stock goes back down to its pre-fight levels, trust and believe, somebody going to lose some money. So now it's kind of a game of hot potato or uh, musical chairs. Everybody, you know, or hot potato. Everybody trying to figure out who's going to be the last one holding when the potato explodes. You know, but in the meantime, so then what happened was uh, Robin Hood and a couple of other mutual um, brokerages got involved because the volatility was crazy. And from what I understand with Robin Hood, they, they stopped allowing people to buy and sell that stock. And the reason was because they... It's really kind of complicated, but when you buy a stock, it goes through a clearinghouse and then it goes onto the stock. And the clearinghouse has to put up the money until it comes in. And because so many shares are being bought, the clearinghouse is like, uh, yo, Robin Hood, you need to give us some more money to cover this. And Robin's like, we ain't got no more. So then they say, well, stop trading on that stock. So that's the way I understood it. There's a couple of lawsuits going on now, at least one. So. I ain't going to speak on it because I am, I don't know. But uh, it looked like that Robin Hood and some of these other brokerages were taking sides in this fight because they were stopping the day traders from doing anything. But yet the rest of uh, the hedge funds could still buy and sell. But the individuals couldn't. So it kind of looked like maybe they were taking sides in all this. So that, in a nutshell, is what is happening right now with GameSpot. Okay, it's still going on. Now the hedge funds are freaking again; they're freaking out, and I guess they're trying to talk to Congress to try to 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 to, to keep this from happening in the future. You can't. This is okay. This is the editorial part of the show. You can't stop this because nobody did anything illegal. Number one, nobody did anything illegal. Nobody um, used insider information. It's just a bunch of people got together and decided, hey, let's buy those stocks. You know, that's what investment clubs are. You know, that's what, you know, people who talk on bulletin boards or, or in Reddit, you talk about your investments. On Facebook, you talk about your investments. That's not illegal. What, what can you do about that? Nothing. Just pray to God they don't do it again. But and see and see, this is where it gets funky to me because the hedge funds. If you remember Jim Cramer, the guy from the eighties and nineties, who had that 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 talking show where he would talk about uh, different stock investments, and he was always yelling and stuff. Um, I'll put a link in the comments. But he um, he did an interview where he talked all about when he was a hedge fund manager. How he would manipulate the market, how he would uh, tell he would buy 
uh, a derivative, some kind of option on this stock. And did he go tell this reporter something, knowing that that reporter would report it, even though if it wasn't true. Um, so he was trying to manipulate the market to get the price better for him so he could make money. And he talked freely about how. He, so and I doubt he is the only hedge fund manager that was ever out there manipulating prices. OK, I doubt it. OK. Um, so it's like, in a way, you know, people say, well, this is, you know, an extension of Occupy Wall Street from about 10, 11 years ago. Or I even heard somebody say this was like an extension of Black Lives Matter. I couldn't figure that one out. But um, this is the kind of stuff. And see, that goes back to a point. Again, this is the editorial part of the show. I've said many times, people on Wall Street don't know what's going on. And I don't mean that as an insult. I mean, if you watch CNBC, you watch some of these other news um, channels that, t that cover Wall Street, when the market closes, they will then try to tell you what happened today. My opinion, they don't know. They will say things like, you know, the market is down because of profit taking. <sighs> that may be true for some people, but there's also some people who sold their stock because grandma need to pay for her new hip, okay? Or, or their, their, their child is in college and they got to pay his tuition or her tuition. That's why people sold the stock. They don't talk about that stuff. It's like, well, it's profit taking, it's fear. And my opinion has always been that that's some, you know, you got a roulette wheel of different reasons. You just spin it and come up with one. But the market is so vast and so diverse, the market, that there is never one reason that anything happens because you got thousands of stocks, thousands of publicly traded companies, U.S. companies, and you got millions of people buying and selling stocks all day. So you can't come up with one reason. Say, Well, this was why all these people did this. See, but then, you know, you got to understand what indexes are. When you talk about the Dow Jones Industrial Average, when you talk about the S&P 500, those are attempts to normalize several thousand shops, uh, stocks and say, these stocks represent the other 3,000. Yeah. There have been days when the market has been down and I've been up. There have been days when the market has been up and I've gotten crushed. But And it's because of the stocks that I own are different than the ones that the, the market is made up of. And I say the market in air quotes that the Dow is measuring, if they're different. They're not better or worse, they're just different. So when people talk about the market, the market is everything and at the same time is nothing. There's the, the market is everybody, okay? So you can't come up with a reason and say, this is why the market's moving. When I hear those kinds of things, I always think, yeah, no, okay? Um, Another thing, and I've said this many times, the stock market is not logical. So don't try to apply logic to the stock market. You know, you'll see people that will come up with things and they'll say things like, um, you know, we can show you how to pick the best stock 72 hours ahead or 24 hours ahead. Nobody saw this coming. Nobody saw what happened to GameStop. Or game spot, excuse me. Nobody saw what happened to them. Nobody saw what was, was happening to Macy's, to AMC theaters. I'm not talking about COVID. I'm talking about this last couple of weeks. Nobody saw this. Yeah, the people on Reddit decided they were going to do something, but they didn't know if it would work. They didn't know how well it would work because there are so many variables. Because it's not just us buying. It's, again, the other people who are not in that group who are seeing the results of your actions and then, oh, I missed out. You know, he was a six, now nah, he's a nine. I want homeboy. You can't, you, you can't account for that because you don't know what's gonna happen there, okay? You can't, so in any time anybody has said to me, I can predict the market, the market usually continues to rise. Why? Because the companies rise. Why do companies' stock prices usually rise? Because if they start falling, the company starts doing drastic research to figure out what in the heck is going on. And that means a change of management, a change of strategy or whatever. But they figure out, they usually try to figure out what's going on. So then the stock goes back up. So stocks usually go up on the most part. 
Now, knowing that, I mean, okay, I'm one of the lucky people. I just sold last week uh, Tesla. I bought Tesla early last year for like $120. And I sold it like 800 and something. Did I know it was going to go to 800? No. Did I expect it to go to 800? No. Did I do a whole ton of research to decide on Tesla? No. I just knew the company. I was like, they ain't going nowhere. I'm dead serious. This is that I bought Tesla. That's, that worked out for me. You know, they were rolling along. They were putting cars in space and stuff like that. I was like, hey, you know, Elon Musk, he smokes his weed or whatever. But I was like, cool, dude. You know, um, so when I see people doing a lot of research, at the end of the day, you're going to make a buy or sell decision. That's all there is to it. And it's not guaranteed. And don't get me wrong. I've made some decisions that, that have not worked, that I've lost money on. But I've also made some decisions that blew my mind. You know, I bought Carvana last year strictly because I saw a commercial. And the commercial said they are uh, the fastest growing retailer in the country. I'm like, what? Boom, I bought Carvana. I kept it for like three months, two months, made 60% on it. Did I expect that? No. But I did. I'm thankful. I'm not bragging. I'm not, you know, I don't have a crystal ball. So don't believe people when they tell you that they can predict anything. Because it's luck. It's chance. Years ago, the Wall Street Journal used to have monkeys throw darts at the wall. that They had put the whole stock market up on the wall. And then they would just make a create a, 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 a fake portfolio of the, the, of the, the um, stocks that the monkeys darts hit. And them darts, that portfolio beat the Dow several years, okay? It's, it's a chance. Another thing, you are competing. When you're in the investing, you're not competing against the market. You're competing against every other investor, several million people. You all have the same information, mostly. Um, and it's how you interpret that information and how you decide things are going to go after that. That's the difference. Sometimes you'll be lucky. Sometimes you won't because there's so many reasons a stock moves. You're in the technology sector and something over there moves. And because that stock moves, everybody in the technology sector moves. Nothing to do with it. Stocks are moving like this all day long, right? Think about this. Stocks are fluctuating all day long, right? Companies aren't announcing anything, but the stock is doing this all day. Because there's so many different factors involved. The, the, the market, to me, is like a big cruise ship in the middle of the ocean with no motor. Instead, everybody's rowing. But there's no coordination. So everybody just, this is the way we row, we row. This is the way we row. Okay? And they're rowing in whatever direction they want to row in. And every now and then, they all happen to row at the same time in the same direction. And the boat goes, whoop. And everybody goes, look, look, it's moving. Yeah. 500 people rowing. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's so many reasons stocks move. But remember, you are competing against the entire market of people who are out there investing. That is who you're competing with. Um, here's another thing. Another point I want to make. The value of a stock, you'll hear the experts say that a stock is over or undervalued. To me, value is defined by what you can get somebody to pay you for something. Say you got a car. You say, my car is worth $4,000. I'm going to put it in the paper $4,000. You put it out there. Nobody buys it. Keep it out there. Nobody buys it. You drop the price to $3,500. Nobody buys it. Keep it out there. You drop the price to $3,000 and somebody comes over and looks at it. And you sit there and you say, well, you know, this car is really worth $4,000. They're looking at it like, nah, son. You can't get nobody to pay you $4,000 for it. It ain't worth $4,000. Same thing with stocks. Right now, GameStop is worth is $325 a share. That's the value of GameStop. You can call it under, overvalued or whatever. That's the value. Because that's what people are trading in it as. It's $325. It's only worth $17. How do you figure that? Well, because we looked at 
what they have in revenue and what they have in holdings and, and what the future long term this and da 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 and we da 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 and we put, you know did this. So if it's only worth seventeen, why is it selling for three twenty five? Rest my case. The value of a stock is what it's trading at. There is no such thing as undervalued or overvalued. That value might change drastically, but it is what it is. It is what it is. It's not seventeen. It's three hundred twenty-five dollars a share. You know. They say, is it worth? Because I think it's worth now twenty-two billion dollars. Okay, what was it worth before? One hundred and forty million. Now it's twenty-two billion. Well, they're not really worth that. I well, can't get anybody to pay them that. According to the paper, they can. Y'all say uh, Elon Musk and uh, the guy from Amazon, they're worth 200 and some billion dollars. Let them try to cash out their stock and get 200 billion dollars and see what happens. Trust me, that supply of stock comes into the market, that price is dropping. So you can say on paper they're worth 200 billion dollars. Ain't nobody going to pay them that. So you can't have it both ways. You can't have that logic on one end and not logic on the other end. So anyway, um, let me see. I wanted to make sure I made all my points. So that's what happened. Bottom line, that's what happened. I can't find any comments. I'm assuming nobody's saying nothing because I don't see no comments. Um, but that's what happened with GameSpot. GameStop, man. I keep messing her name up. That's what happened with them. And that's what's still happening. Here's the crazy. So now people are saying, well, you know what? I will put options. I will, I will short it now at 325, figuring, hey, I bought it. I shorted it at 325, but it drops down to 17 again. I'm going to make a ton of money. Or not. <laughs> That's what got y'all in the mess in the first place. I'm just saying, you know. But, um,. Oh, sorry, I got a little <laughs> notification on my screen. I was like, what? Okay. But anyway, so that's what happened. So um, if you in it, you made some money. I'm assuming that you bought it at 324. Um, some great stories about some, you know, his own kid got some stock part of a, a Kwanzaa gift years ago, and he cashed in, you know. There was one company I read they had in GameStop – Keep saying GameStop. Yeah, GameStop. Uh, they had a GameStop owed them like sixty million dollars, and the and the collateral was their stock. It's like the stock grew to be enough to cover the liability, and they're like, "Okay, you're good." I don't know if that's true, but that's funny. Um, you best believe GameSpot right now is trying to find a way to 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 get some of that money out. Okay. They're definitely trying to find a way. <clears throat> so anyway, um, so yeah, that was this week's show. Like I said, I hopefully um, I made it a little understandable about what happened. Um, you can hit me up on, on Facebook. This will be going up on YouTube. Uh, it will be going out to my podcast feed, so there'll be other places. Um, can't say when we'll do the next show, but um, again, I do this show because I want to explain money how it works, how it doesn't work. Um, I'm not a financial advisor by any stretch. Um, I have degrees in accounting and finance. I know a little bit about money. I can count. I can play with a spreadsheet. Um, but I'm not a financial advisor. So any advice you take from me, it's on your own, dog. However, if you take some advice and, and it works out really, really well, you can hit a brother with a little bit of coin. I'm just saying. But anyway... Um, thank you. Thank you. I try to keep it short to about a half hour. Had a little uh, uh, start start and stop at the beginning. Y'all don't know because I deleted it. But um, I thank you for, for, for hanging in there, the people that hung in there. If you missed the beginning show, it'll be up here on YouTube. It'll be on Facebook Live. Um, hit me up, Tyrone Griffin, um, if you have any questions. I know these glasses. But uh, oh, I can't see um, if you have any questions, <laughs> um, uh, hit me up. I'll try to answer them. I can't always guarantee, but I can do the research and find out for you. So with that, everybody, have a very blessed day. Uh, start to your week. All my friends in the Northeast, 
Y'all got some of that white stuff coming. Okay, and I don't mean rioters. Y'all got some snow coming, 13, 14 inches. So uh, please, everybody, uh, wherever you are, uh, in addition to just trying to be safe from COVID, uh, please just be careful, be safe. I hope you and your families make it through all of this. With that, everybody, have a great day, have a great week, and I will talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.